This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Need to Hone, and it's Wednesday, and that means it's time for another deck history video. In this series, I trace the development of specific deck archetypes from their inception all the way through to the present day. As usual, I ran a poll that determined the topic of this video, and in the end, Goblin Charbelcher got a pretty convincing victory over Spirits. Funnily enough, it's oddly fitting to be talking about a deck called Belcher during the week of Thanksgiving. Anyway, if you want to have a say in what the topic of next week's video is, don't forget to vote on the poll in the Community tab. So, Goblin Charbelcher decks, which, as I just noted, are frequently just called Belcher decks, they get their name from a specific card, Goblin Charbelcher, a card that was originally printed in 2003's Mirrodin, and it's a pretty wacky card. You can pay three and tap it to reveal cards from the top of your library until a land is revealed. Then the Belcher deals damage equal to the number of cards revealed, or double that damage if the land you reveal is a mountain. Importantly, if your deck has zero lands in it, it will simply do damage equal to the number of cards in your deck. So Goblin Charbelcher decks are combo decks that seek to abuse this artifact by quickly powering it out and using the ability. These decks tend to run a way to get rid of the lands in their deck, or they run very few lands to begin with, so that a single activation of the Belcher is enough to do lethal to the opponent. Belcher decks have found success in Standard, Modern, Extended, Legacy, and Vintage, and in this video we'll talk about what each of those decks looked like and how and why they changed over time. We're going to begin with a look at Extended, because that's where a deck that could abuse the Belcher first emerged. Extended is a now-defunct rotating format that featured the last several years of cards. People found a way to abuse the Belcher there pretty quickly, as the card came out in 2003, and by late 2003 there were three Extended Goblin Char Belcher decks top aiding Pro Tour New Orleans. The three decks that top aided the event were very similar to one another, but let's take a look at Gabriel Nassif's version of the deck, which had the highest finish of the three at second place. So, this very first version of Belcher utilized Goblin Char Belcher alongside Mana Severance. If you cast Severance first, you could simply get rid of all but one of the lands in your deck, or just all of them, and then use the Belcher for the win. As you can see, it's a mono blue deck, and there are various means by which it can quickly get the two combo pieces together. The deck has Mystical Tutor to help find the Severance, as well as Brainstorm, which can help you dig deeper into your deck. The Belcher is a fairly expensive artifact, so the deck had to work hard to get it into play quickly and use it, and that's something we're going to see throughout this video, because 4 to play and 3 to activate is a lot of mana. This could simply be accomplished by using fast mana artifacts like Chrome Mox and Grim Monolith, as well as lands like Ancient Tomb and City of Traders. The deck also ran Tinker, which you could use to put the Belcher directly into play if you sacrificed an artifact. After this event, both Ancient Tomb and Grim Monolith were banned, and that made it significantly more difficult to get the combo going quickly enough, and that put an end to Belcher decks in Extended. However, Pro 2 in New Orleans had shown that Goblin Char Belcher could be a legitimate combo piece, and this led to different Belcher decks showing up in other formats. Let's move to Standard now. A dedicated Belcher deck never really emerged in the format, but decks running the Char Belcher as one of its win conditions did, so I think it's worth looking at them. At Worlds in 2004, Manuel Bavand piloted his Clark Clan Ironworks deck to a top 4 finish. These decks are largely built around using the Ironworks and are loaded up with artifacts to sacrifice. The deck featured two win conditions. One of these was a lethal fireball with all of that mana. The other was to use Mirror Incubator to put a bunch of Mirror into play. The deck's lands were entirely artifact lands like Great Furnace, so you could use it to remove any permanent cards in the deck you wanted to, including all of your lands, and... That's where the Belcher could come in. You could potentially win the game with the Mer tokens, or you could use them for mana for a fireball, but the other option was that you could activate Goblin Char Belcher and kill the opponent. So, yeah, not a Belcher deck exactly, as evidenced by the fact that this deck only has a single copy, but Goblin Char Belcher did play a role in the deck, and really, that's generally how Belcher decks looked in Standard throughout 2004. All those artifact lands ended up getting banned in early 2005, though, and that meant that combining the incubator with artifact lands was no longer a thing, so the combo was no longer viable in standard. Let's move now to Legacy, the format where Belcher decks have been the most consistently prominent. Legacy Belcher decks first showed up in 2007. Three players brought Belcher decks to Worlds that year. At the time, Worlds involved players playing a bunch of different formats, and the three players who brought Belcher decks to the event didn't finish in the top eight overall, but they did perform reasonably well in the Legacy portion of the event. 
In Standard and Extended, we saw that Belcher decks ran a card that allowed them to get rid of all their lands ahead of activating the Belcher, but in Legacy, decks could take a very different approach and just run very few lands. As you can see, Miguel Gotica's deck has exactly two of them. This means that you no longer need to combine two cards, you really just need to get the Belcher down and you're probably going to win. This wasn't doable in Standard or Extended, but this was possible in Legacy for several reasons. One of the biggest ones was Land Grant. You can get away with running zero lands if you have four land grants in your deck, because if you end up drawing one or having it in your opening hand, you just get to search up a land. So you pretty consistently end up with a single land, which is important. This also meant that you were very likely to have at least one green mana early, which was important because you could use it to cast Tinder Wall, which would net you some mana and let you start going off. The deck also ran a lot of non-land, zero-costed ways to produce mana, including Elvish and Simeon Spirit Guide, which could simply be exiled from your hand for mana, and Chrome Mox, which we saw earlier. In addition to that, there was also Lotus Petal and Lion's Eye Diamond. The goal here was to chain all that free mana together with ritual effects like Seething Song and Dark Ritual. You could use all that mana to play and activate the Belcher for lethal. With all those rituals and free cards, the deck could run an additional win condition, and in this case it was Empty the Warrens. The deck could of course produce huge storm counts, so Empty the Warrens was a pretty legitimate win condition. In 2008, Matthew Elias piloted a very similar Belcher deck to a top 8 finish at the Legacy Championship. The deck is almost card for card identical, with the only major changes being the inclusion of Mana Morphos, a card that lets you filter mana with a cantrip, and a singleton plunge into darkness that could help you find your combo pieces. For the next several years, there weren't any major changes made to the deck, and there didn't need to be, as the deck was one of the best decks in the format as it was. For example, three Belcher decks top aided Worlds in 2010. By 2012, though, Belcher decks had changed a little bit. Gerardo Fadon piloted a Belcher deck to a top 8 finish at Grand Prix Atlanta that year, and one thing you may have immediately noticed is that the deck now only has one land in it. There wasn't really a reason to run the second land, as it could actually decrease the consistency of a Belcher activation winning the game. Now, if you got one land grant in your opening hand, you could get rid of the one land in your deck and make the Belcher much more potent. Another change to the deck was the use of Gitaxian Probe, a card which could add to the storm count and dig you deeper into your deck, while also allowing you to check to see if your opponent could interfere with the combo. From here on, Legacy Belcher decks started to run only a single land, and they also ran the Probe, at least as long as they could. It eventually got banned in the format in 2018. But the deck didn't change significantly between about 2012 and 2020, which is pretty remarkable. And even if we fast forward to 2020, you still see a pretty similar deck. There are a few changes though. For example, Gamble gives the deck another tutor effect to find the Belcher or other cards, and Eren Crag Feet gives the deck another ritual effect, and importantly, one that produces exactly 7 mana, which is enough to cast and activate the Belcher. And Echo of Aeons gave the deck a way to reload its hand and keep chaining rituals together while trying to find the combo pieces. It can also reload your deck for your Belcher if the game has gone so long that you don't have enough cards in your deck. There is one other legacy deck I want to talk about briefly that features the Belcher, though we can't really call it a Belcher deck because it doesn't run it in the main deck. This deck, humorously named Oops All Spells, is a deck that doesn't run any lands, so you can see why the Belcher would be a good fit there. Well, the deck does run lands, but they are all the modal double-faced cards from Zendikar Rising that have a spell on one side and a land on the other side. This allowed Belcher decks and other decks to start running zero lands in the deck while still having access to mana. While the cards are a land on one side, those cards are not seen as lands by cards that check for them in your library like Goblin Char Belcher. The introduction of these lands would overall lead to a resurgence of Belcher decks or the emergence of Belcher decks in multiple formats. Anyway, this particular deck seeks to use Balustrade Spy and Undercity Informer to mill the entire deck. One enter the battlefield ability from the Spy, or one activation from the Informer will do it because the deck has zero lands. This will then put four Narc Amoebas into play, and then you can flashback Dread Return to reanimate Thassa's Oracle and win the game with the Enter the Battlefield ability. So, yeah, Belcher isn't in this deck, but it is a sideboard card and an important one. Graveyard Hate can really kill this deck, and after game one, bringing Belchers in is sometimes a good idea, as the Graveyard Hate won't do anything to stop it. So, yeah, it's not a Belcher deck, but it is another place where Goblin Char Belcher has been useful. We're going to see the Spy and Informer and these modal double-faced cards factor into more recent Belcher decks in other formats, so it was useful to introduce them to you here. So, yeah, Goblin Char Belcher is a key card and deck in Legacy, and that's going to continue. Let's take a look now at Vintage Belcher. Obviously, Vintage has the largest card pool of any format, so Vintage versions of the deck vary some from what we've seen so far. 
As you can see from this deck that top aided the Magic Online Vintage Championship in 2014, the one land this deck runs is Tolarian Academy. This makes sense because the deck is loaded up with lots of artifacts, and the deck also runs the full complement of the Power 9, along with all kinds of other powerful mana rocks that aren't legal in any other formats. With all this fast mana, the Belcher combo can go off even faster. The deck can even use Expedition Map to remove the one land from the deck so that the Belcher is always lethal, and it's nice that sometimes you can grab that land and then just tap it, play your Belcher, and activate it because you have so many artifacts in play. The deck also runs Tezzeret the Seeker, who can serve as an alternate win condition by animating all of your artifacts. This is what Belcher decks looked like for several years in Vintage, but in 2021 they underwent a significant change, and it's a change much like we saw occur more recently in Legacy, one that was initiated by the introduction of modal double face cards with a spell on one side and a land on the other. Just like we saw in Legacy, these newer Belcher decks are entirely landless and can win the game with Balustrade Spy or Undercity Informer plus Thassa's Oracle or just by using the Belcher's ability. Unlike in Legacy Oops All Spells, this is still a Belcher deck or at least closer to one because it features the card as a main deck win condition and not just as a sideboard option. This version of Belcher is doing pretty well right now in Magic Online, and that bodes well for the future of decks that run Goblin Char Belcher. There's still one more format to talk about, though, and that's Modern. Belcher decks didn't really exist in Modern until quite recently, with the first one putting up a big finish in 2020. Just like we saw in the other formats, the introduction of modal double face cards really powered up Belcher decks, since it can now run lands that the Belcher itself won't see as lands. Before those lands showed up, Belcher wasn't a viable deck in Modern, as there just weren't enough free ways to make mana in the format, so you couldn't run a few lands like we saw in other formats. However, the modal double face cards changed this, because now the deck could go landless, at least as far as the Belcher was concerned. This version of the deck is also pretty much all in on the Belcher, without any other win conditions. One interesting addition in Modern is a main deck Blood Moon, a card that really messes up the mana base of other decks and makes it harder for them to interact with you and slows them down, and it also runs a main deck Defense Grid, which is there to prevent the opponent from interacting with you on your turn, which means they won't be able to do anything about a Belcher activation. Then, in 2021, Modern Belcher decks underwent a change that parallels what we've already discussed in other formats, and that is, once again, the introduction of Balustrade Spy and Undercity Informer, who are now played alongside the Belcher, providing some additional win conditions that pay you off for not running any lands. However, the non-Belcher way this deck wins in Modern is significantly different from what we saw before, and is even more convoluted, if you can believe that. Dread Return is banned in Modern, and remember that was key in the Legacy and Vintage versions of the deck, which would reanimate Thassa's Oracle using Dread Return. And that's off the table here, so Thassa's Oracle isn't in the deck. In this case, when you mill your entire library, you mill four Creeping Chills, which drains your opponent for 12 life, and you'll also mill Narc Amoebas and Swords of the Meek. The swords will then attach themselves to the Narc Amoebas, then you return Salvage Titan to your hand, and then sacrifice three artifacts to cast it. Between the Swords of the Meek and the Mana Rocks in the deck, you'll always have the three artifacts you need. When you cast the Titan for its alternate cost, it will become a second creature spell since you cast a Spy or Informer earlier in the same turn, and casting a second spell brings back all those Venge Vines, at which point you can swing for lethal. This is still a deck that's doing pretty well right now in Modern, and it looks like decks running Goblin Char Belcher are going to become a factor there going forward. So, Belcher decks have been showing up in Magic almost since the day the card got printed, and while the deck around the Belcher has changed over time with different ritual effects and alternate win conditions around it, Belcher decks have been pretty consistent overall. Well, that's the history of Belcher decks. Remember, if you want to have a say in the topic of next week's deck history, vote in the poll on the community tab. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you catch future episodes of the series and a whole bunch of other content that I produce, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you haven't caught up on the rest of this series, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting the channel, you can on Patreon. Thanks for watching.